Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is an action-adventure game from 2019 developed by From Software that is also behind such previous titles as Demon's Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne and the recently published Elden Ring. Although Sekiro is made by From Software and has similar elements to the Soul series, it differs much from its predecessors from having a different style of combat and gameplay and also introducing a much more cinematic story that the player can understand more easily than what normally is in From Software's games. But like the Soul series, Sekiro is still notorious from its incredibly difficult gameplay that even many veterans of the Soul series found more difficult due to the changes of pace of the gameplay. I myself remember on my first playthrough struggling in multiple sections of the game, which is why, after playing this for so long, I have decided to try and give my aid to new players of this magnificent game with this video. Thus, I welcome all of you ninjas beginning the path of the ninja with my first visual guide to learning the way of Sekiro. Shadows die twice. As you gain control of Wolf, you immediately notice that you are wounded and have low health. You can proceed with the game like this and continue, but if you wish to walk on a slightly safer path, press start, select any of the five quick item slots by pressing down, and then press the accept button. You'll open the My Item menu with only one item in it, the Homeward Idle. Select it and then exit the menu. Now you see you have it on your bottom right corner highlighted, and by pressing up on your D-pad, It'll give you an option. Selecting it will make you use the homeward idol. As you use it, you will teleport to the last checkpoint or sculpture's idol. Those will cover later. Now you see that your health is fully restored and you're good to go. The basic movements you have are jump and a wall jump by pressing jump while in the air next to a wall. Use this to gain more height. As you progress, you will notice areas that have white marks on walls and ledges. These indicate platforms or walls where you can shimmy along the wall or ledges you are hanging from. As you enter this next area, you will see tall grass next to you. All of these areas you encounter in the game grant you an opportunity to stay hidden after pressing and toggling L3, which puts you in a crouched position. While doing this, enemies who are unalerted and standing farther from you cannot spot you. Move along the grass towards the building in front of you without coming out of the grass, under the porch, and from the hole under the building. Along the way, you can eavesdrop the enemies to learn directions and lore of what is happening. None of it is necessary to do, but it helps you understand a bit more about the situation. From here on, after coming out of the other hole from under the building, Follow the way forward with the previous instructions to the Moonlit Tower from the cliffside. Now that you've gotten your sword back, I'm sure you're eager to begin using it on live targets, but you are unable to wield it yet in a place with important NPCs around and have to exit the tower first. However, to prepare more for what's coming and before talking to Kuro, your master, head upstairs first and pick up a pellet. This is your secondary healing item which are consumable and lost upon usage. After heading down, talk to Kuro and receive your primary healing item, the healing gourd. This has one charge in it at the start, but the charges are restored after resting at a sculpture's idol upon using the homeward idol or upon death. Now head to the menu and place these two items to your quick items in order to make their use easier. You are now ready to open the door and face the dangers of the world. Having your sword drawn out, you are now able to swing it freely with the R1 button. With it, your basic choices to victory in combat against enemies are as follows. Sneaking behind an unaware enemy and pressing R1 as a red circle appears on them, attacking and dealing damage to their HP and posture, or by deflecting an oncoming enemy attack by pressing L1 right before the attack hits you and then pressing R1 when their posture breaks and you see a red circle on them. The deflection takes time to learn and enemies have many attacks, but take my advice and learn this art as thoroughly as possible while playing the game. 
A good thing to know about the deflection is that pressing L1 makes Wolf take the guard position really fast and you can press it repeatedly to do a so-called sword dance if you're unsure on how the attacks of the enemies land on you in the beginning of the game. This is a very viable tactic to use in the beginning until you start to get a feeling of the mechanic better yourself. As you might have guessed, the enemies are not always so easy to sneak up to, but you can also use an elevated platform and perform an aerial death blow by blocking onto the enemy with R3, jumping towards them and pressing R1 immediately as the red circle appears on them. While your sword is drawn, your mobility options increase yet again as you are now able to use sprint to run around faster by holding the sprint button and holding the direction you wish to sprint towards. If you instead tap the sprint button, you will dash forward or to a specific direction if you press towards a direction. This will let you perform quick evasive maneuvers in order to get out of the way of deadly attacks. Using sprint and jumping afterwards will let you do a longer jump that will let you reach places further away. Be wary that you can press grab button mid-air upon some ledges marked specifically that are grabbable and climb up if there is a platform ahead of the ledge you are hanging from. As you might notice, in this game you jump very high and reach up to many places that are very high. However, as a huge exception, Sekiro is much more lenient and merciful when it comes to fall damage, unlike the other From Software games you might have played, where you die very easily from falling. In Sekiro, fall damage never results in an instant death, even if you would fall to a pit. It merely deals damage albeit it does deal a lot of damage and might kill you should you have less HP. Having cleared the enemies and walking through the gate, you see the previous menacing looking person that spoke ill of you. Time to take revenge upon those words and punishing by plunging your sword through him. As soon as he notices you, you'll see his name, Shigenori Yamauchi, and his health bar appear in the top left corner. Time to put the skills you've learned so far to use. Shigenori has fairly visibly telegraphed attacks that are easy to predict. When trading blows with him, you will notice two yellow bars rise up, one in the bottom middle of the screen and one in the top middle. The top bar represents the boss's posture bar and the bottom one represents your posture bar. Once that bar fills up to its maximum, the corresponding person will stagger and will be left vulnerable to deadly attacks. In this fight, both of the bars rise up quite fast since you are still in a weakened state, but luckily Shigenori's bar rises also, depicting he is not that strong. Performing successful deflections will hugely increase his posture bar and allow you to immediately perform a counter slash that will take you to victory in no time. Carefully study his attack patterns, break his posture, and claim a death blow. After this, it is still not time to celebrate victory just yet, as you see on his health bar two red circles where one of them dims out. These circles represent how many death blows you must perform until the boss is actually killed, so remain on your guard after the first death blow. Should you gain too much posture damage that your bar is close to getting filled, fear not, for it recovers on its own if you aren't doing anything. However, if the enemy still presses on and you need to recover faster, holding the block button will recover your posture much faster. Although this is a good tactic to catch some breath, be aware that the boss also recovers posture by not doing anything, so keep up the relentless assault when you are ready. A good thing to know about posture recovery is that the less health either you or enemies have, the more slowly that person's posture recovers, even if you would hold down the block button. Utilize this mechanic to strike at the enemies from time to time to lessen their health should their posture recovery prove as a problem. Deflect Shigenori's attacks, perform counter slashes, and you will achieve victory in no time. Should the deflect windows prove too difficult, Shigenori's attacks and patterns are very forgiving, so holding the block button and taking up a few hits here and there are fine. Block a few attacks, attack to increase his posture, and you will eventually break his posture and deliver the second death blow. Congratulations on your first victory upon a mini-boss. After that, go right from the stairs, jump from the tree branch to the ledge and climb up, head to the side of the bridge, wall jump and grab the ledge, shimmy by the side and climb under the bridge, kill the ninja, yes, that is a ninja, hang on the other ledge and shimmy to the left, find the escape path underneath you and call Kuro to you with the raid whistle. And there you have it.
You have practiced the basics of being a ninja and completed the first area in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. What comes next will be covered in the next video, so stay tuned for that. And please like the video, subscribe for more, and comment the video if you have any comments or questions. Thanks for watching, stay vigilant, and I'll see you next time. Fight, fight, fight if you wanna live long. See the